late winter hunting season's well over, but it's a great time to start scouting for next season. Now the sheds, we've been checking our cameras and deer are still carrying their antlers, so we're really not been able to find the sheds that we would like to find this time of year. But it's still a good time. All the foliage is gone. You can identify deer trails. We can find rubs. And we can even see if there was some late season rutting activity that we may have missed. We'll look for scrapes and just some of that community communication tools that deer like to use. So we're going to get out here and take a look. And we had a great bumper crop for, for acorns this year. But we can see we've got a cedar stand and just from right here I can see 20 or 30 really good rubs. I wasn't in this area during hunting season, but it looks like I may have missed a little bit. I mean, there are just tons of rubs all through these cedars, and I just I didn't get to spend any time in here in this hunting season. We hunted a different section of the property, but I mean, there's some really good sized rubs. One of the things you can notice here is we've got several different years of rubs. You can see fresh ones and some from last year, so they're really using this area a lot. But you can't always tell. You hear guys say, oh, I saw a really big rub, it was a big round. One thing you look for is the height of the rub and then the gouge marks in the tree. I was fooled by that once. I found a really big rub and it was on a telephone pole. So I have, you can imagine what I was thinking. We have got a buck that's big enough to rub a telephone pole. So I set a stand up in this right away and hunted the edge of it. And sure enough, right at daylight, here come a buck walked straight to the telephone pole and started rubbing it, and it was a spike with about four inch antlers. So you can't always tell by just the size or diameter of the tree. As we come down this point, you know, we talked about, we've seen all this white oak where the deer had spent a lot of time this fall feeding, but right on the edge of this cedar thicket where all these rubs are, we've got a really big oak tree and you can see where the deer are still foraging in here. And there's a lot of acorns still on the tree falling, which is surprising to me this time of year. This is a prime example of some of the things you can learn while you're out late season scouting. All oak aren't producing acorns at the same time. Now white oak will produce its crop yearly where red oak takes two years for that acorn to mature. So that acorn stays on that tree for two years. As it matures, that's when it falls. Now a new hunter may ask what the significance of finding you know, rubs in an area like this. Well, here you have so many concentrated rubs which shows how much time bucks are spending in this area. So finding a travel route in here and maybe not necessarily setting up in the middle of this because there could be some bedding areas close. We have a lot of, of thicker cover around it. But finding an access into here will be a great place to put a stand. But this, this rub, you can see that they've hit it several times. It's got deep gouge marks, but it has some really fresh bits of bark laying here. It's been hit recently. Now deer primarily rub early in the season as their velvet's losing and they're marking their territory. But any time a deer antlers are hard, they will rub a tree. It's not just in that early part of the season. It's a beautiful day to be out here in the woods and, and learn a little bit more about whitetail and other wildlife. And you can see so much without any foliage on. We can see their trails, we can see where they're browsing, where they're bedding. Looking for bedding areas is another really important part of late season or late winter scouting. You don't necessarily want to do that a few weeks before you're hanging a stand next season. Now's the time to get in the woods where you're not going to bother anything and spook them out for next hunting season. Now again, not always indicative of the deer size, but this is something you'd want to see is that heavy gouge when you're looking at a rub, which can indicate a little bit bigger deer. You want to see tine marks and not just, you know, one direct rub. But seeing where the tines are hitting the tree, that's a little more indication of what we're looking for. One of the advantages to hunting in hilly or contoured mountain terrain is deer will tend to move on benches or flat surfaces instead of just around the hillside. And we've got a little bit of a flat or a bench on this hill right up off the creek. And there's a great game trail coming through here. It'd be a perfect place to come back in a few weeks when they start dropping their antlers. This is somewhere we're definitely going to walk and look for a few sheds. I love getting out and seeing these old tree stands and just knowing what kind of history was here and what the guy that set this up and what he saw. But you can tell he was a good hunter. He had a four fork tree, he could hide himself right in there. Just a perfect place to ambush a whitetail. We walked this trail along the creek all the way down here just hoping to find maybe a shed that they'd already dropped. We come up on a really nice scrape. This is a good indicator that there was some late season rutting activity. But also keep in mind that deer will use scrapes year round. It's a communication tool. The does will use it to communicate with other does, with fawns and bucks will communicate with the does and bucks. 
So it's just a really good tool and a great piece of information to know that we have a lot of activity in this area. But remember, it's a beautiful day to get out. You always learn more about wildlife. But if you have an opportunity, take a child, your own son, the neighbor's kid, your nephew, niece, get them out in the woods and see what they think about this. This is a great time to introduce them to the outdoors, teach them some of these patterns and maybe find a shed or two and really develop that hunger for the outdoors. It's the only way we're going to preserve our heritage.